Google recently changed one of their policies that has effectively killed this YouTube channel. Now, I wanna share this because you guys are my subscribers and viewers and it's of interest to my channel, but even bigger, there are many channels that are going to be affected by this policy change. And there are many would-be YouTubers out there who have considered the idea of starting your own YouTube channel, of this side hustle, supplementing your income with creating some fun, educational, entertaining, what have you, videos, or maybe even doing your own full-time YouTube channel. But I think this latest policy change will make that impractical for the vast majority of people. And even more than that, I think it signals how the changes that Google makes, obviously Google owns YouTube, and so they have the ability to change the funding model, the advertising model of how you qualify to get funding out of YouTube and many other things. And the very fact that they can, on a moment's notice, make a policy change that drastically affects the viability of YouTube becoming successful for you. I think all of that is up in the air now and I want to share the experiences I've had. I've been YouTubing for a few years now. This channel is only 10 months old, but I've learned a lot of lessons both with this channel and others that I have that I wanna share with you that I think will be valuable for anyone who has considered starting your own YouTube channel. Now there are three kinds of YouTube channels out there in my opinion. The first and the rarest of them are channels that have gone viral. Someone started a video, did a channel with some great idea. You've got Mr. Beast, for example, that wants to give away large sums of money and that grows very quickly into a massive following. Now, those types of channels might be one in a million. I don't know exactly what the number is, but the vast majority of people do not fall into that category. The second group are average people like you and me who have some idea. You enjoy teaching, training, entertaining, amusing other people or what have you. So you start a YouTube channel, but you're not an influencer. And so you have to gradually grow your channel organically through personal contact, working with others to try to broaden your audience and such. And most of those channels never amount to anything. They don't reach a point at which they're financially viable, that you're actually making money based on views. And the third group that I'm in, and I think many others are in, are individuals that want to start a YouTube channel. You develop skills and you get started. You spend money on equipment and sets and these types of things and then you work on growing your channel through advertising. And there are a variety of ways to do advertising. Most of them are not considered sanctioned by Google and YouTube. Ways that you can go and basically buy views and buy subscribers that aren't legitimate and your channel can be canceled if you're caught doing those things. And so I've never engaged in any of those kind of activities but instead I did a lot of research to find the best way to market my YouTube channel. And the primary vendor in that space is called Prodvigate. Prodvigate is a Google partner and they work very closely with Google to help you get your channel advertised. And on Prodvigate, you have to spend $50 per week at the minimum plan to participate and the way it basically works is you subscribe, you pay, for example, you start at the bottom at $50 per week. So for around $200 to $250 per month. And the way Google and Prodvigate's advertising works is that when someone is browsing or perusing through all of the video options on YouTube, if you are subscribing to Prodvigate's service, then your video will be suggested as one of the options for people who are looking. And it's a smart system where it's based on demographics and topics, a taxonomy, so that you can go in and indicate, hey, my videos are about tech or audio or whatever that might be. And then the Google Prodvigate systems helps viewers match up the kinds of videos they're wanting to watch with paid 
subscribers. So that's what I've been doing on Prodvigate since I started my channel back in October of 2021. I started out at the minimum subscription level and found a good amount of success. And through that process, I was able to look at the return, my growth rate and such, and calculate how much I would need to spend in order to grow my channel so that it was viable. I started out spending $40 a week initially when I started my channel because that was the minimum back then. And I've elevated to the point now that I spend $125 per week. So that's around between five and $600 a month I'm spending to advertise my channel. And as a result of that, I've seen a steady increase in the number of views and the number of subscribers. Over that 10 months, I ended up spending, as you'll see here, $6,000 and I grew to 1,700 subscribers. So I was spending approximately $3.50 per subscriber. That's more than I was wanting to pay and was willing to pay. But as I looked at the growth curve, adjusted my numbers, I figured out that I could reach the level that I needed to be and could sustain the level of growth. I was at one point reaching around 20% growth per month. And at that steep of a curve, I was going to be able to grow to the point that I could make this channel financially viable. As is, I've really made nothing off the channel to date. I've only spent lots of money. But as I've traced the growth, looked at the curve, and projected out where that level of growth could get me, I was able to build a successful business model to where I could get to the point that this channel could support my needs at least part-time. And if I continue that level of investment, I thought I could eventually get to the point that I could retire from my tech job and become a full-time YouTuber. But all of that changed about three weeks ago when Google announced that they're changing their policy of how many videos you can advertise at one time. Now that may seem innocuous, but let me explain the real impact that it has on certain types of channels. Now there are some channels where someone is releasing a new video once a week or even once a day, and they only need to advertise the last five videos, for example, in order to continue their growth pattern. But for me, I took a different approach. I have a very broad level of interest where I'm interested in audio and technology and camping, EDC, quantum physics. I just have a very broad, I'm a writer, I write books and such. And so I have a very broad level of interest. So when I decided to start a channel, I wanted to focus on a very broad channel where I could look at products, innovative, cutting edge products that would be of interest to the average person who was interested in tech or audiophile or camping, EDCs and knives and flashlights and wallets and all kinds of things. And so I intentionally developed a very broad subject matter and I reviewed products that I thought would have a shelf life of five years, 10 years wallets, flashlights, those are going to be on the market for many, many years. And so I, I created a business model to be able to do a wide variety of products with the intention of continue to advertise those types of topics. So that if someone was doing a search and said, Hey, I'm looking for a hammock, they would likely find my video and my channel and possibly subscribe or if you're interested in backpacks or cameras or headphones, wireless Bluetooth headphones, you would be able to find my video and then potentially subscribe to that channel. Well, that was working beautifully and I was advertising all of my videos. Right now I have around 33 active videos. And so because of the breadth of those videos and I was advertising all 33 of those videos at the same time, I was making a lot of hits and my growth curve of new subscribers and watchers was growing pretty astronomically. And then one day I published a new video and went on Prodigate to add it to my subscription plan so that it would be advertised too. But instead of being allowed to publish that, I was told there's now a limit on how many videos you can 
advertise at one time. They set it initially at one value and then a week later they dropped it all the way down to five. And so at this point in time, I can only advertise five of my videos at a time. And the minute that new policy went into effect, it dramatically cut my growth rate in half, actually a little less than half, and it doubled the price of my advertising. So before this went into effect, I was paying $3.50 per subscriber, around $600 a month. And then after that policy went into effect, my cost per subscriber went up double. It went from $3.50 to $7. And at $7 per subscriber, my business model no longer works. I cannot afford to spend $7 to get each new subscriber. My growth rate dropped in half from around 255 new subscribers a month to around 125. So my growth rate has been cut in half and my cost has doubled. The scary thing is that Google can just make any kind of policy change like this at any given moment and it can suddenly make a viable business model on YouTube completely unviable. It can basically break your channel. So here I am in a situation where I've spent 10 months growing this channel, creating lots of videos. I've spent $6,000 on advertising. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on equipment and my studio and such. And despite this massive investment, lots of my time for 10 months, I'm now in a situation where I can no longer sustain enough growth to make this channel viable. So that's frustrating for me as a YouTuber, but I've got to think that anyone who understands what's going on, this is going to break a lot of channels. Suddenly, many channels that have been marginally successful and are on a good growth curve are going to be put in a situation where they can no longer sustain that level of growth. So I think this signals to the whole world that if you have had this desire to start a YouTube channel, I wouldn't advise it. Now, I do think there's some ways that you can diversify and I've been working on a diversification strategy where I promote and publish my videos on Instagram and Facebook and other social media platforms. And I think that everyone is going to have to adapt to these kinds of changes if they're going to continue to have any measure of success. But I do want to caution all of you would-be YouTubers out there that you could look at a business plan, a strategy on how you could grow your YouTube channel into something that's successful, and then you spend an enormous amount of time and money on that, and then suddenly, without any forewarning, a YouTube policy change comes down from Google, and lo and behold, all of the effort is for naught, and what was once a thriving, growing YouTube channel is to the point that I may have to pull the plug. Certainly, I've got to go back to the drawing board and see is there any way I can make changes to be successful? Because I certainly can't afford to spend $7 to get every new subscriber, and I don't think most people can. I think that suddenly the average person is going to look at the cost to promote their channel through Google and are gonna find that is just not feasible for me. So I wanted to share that with you and I hope you guys will share this video and help get the word out because number one, I don't wanna give up this channel because I started, because I love this kind of thing. I like exploring new product categories, finding new cutting edge, innovative products that are head and shoulders above their competitors and saying, hey, look at what I found and be a, an advocate for innovative thinking and new product development so that you guys can find products that will help elevate your level of life, your experience, and find new ways of integrating technology and new products into your life to thrive in new ways. I just don't know that I can keep doing this channel though. 
Am I going to have to resort to switching to puppies and kitties or idiot driver videos or what have you? You know, I certainly hope not because that's just not what I'm interested in. So I'm in a situation, I'm in a quandary now where I look at the numbers, the curves and such and think, you know, in most settings, there are always risks to starting a new business, whether that's starting a storefront, a restaurant, or what have you. But you can typically calculate the costs, the risks, and such, and you can build a successful business once you understand all those numbers. But to be in an environment, a marketplace, where suddenly one vendor can make a decision that is not pre-announced, all of a sudden a change happens and it can dramatically impact your numbers, your viability. You know, that's just a scary scenario. So I wanted to present that information to you guys. I would like to get the word out to let other people know of this change. I really hope that Google will watch this video and others like it to realize that they need to be more careful and thoughtful about how one policy change can kill the livelihood of thousands of channels and thousands of lives who have spent an enormous amount of time and effort to create content and build sets and buy camera gear and develop concepts and work on those and create, produce the video and then go in and edit them and spend days editing each video and getting it ready and publishing it and creating thumbnails and all that's involved in this process. I love it. I would like to be able to continue doing that. I hope Google will consider changing their policy back to the way it was and go, oh, we didn't realize that this would put out of business thousands of YouTubers and that they will change it back to the way it was so that there's not so much fluctuation in the dynamics so that it's no longer infeasible to get a channel started, invest in it heavily, and then have it go under. And I also hope that this space continues to grow so that Facebook gets Instagram to the point that it is financially viable for people to create content on the Instagram platform, video content. So I just want to let you guys know that the future of my channel here seems uncertain. Am I going to be willing to continue to create video knowing that I can't viably promote all of my videos and to grow the channel in an affordable way? I just don't know the answer to those questions. If you see a drop in the number of videos or the ending of videos, you'll know what's going on. I'm certainly going to go back to the drawing board, reconsider everything, look at other platforms and decide, can I continue to do this? And if not on YouTube, then where am I going to turn? I'd love to get you guys' feedback, either other YouTubers out there who've found other ways of growing their channel or I would simply love to get your feedback and encouragement about continuing my YouTube channel. I've got to say, I'm pretty discouraged at this point after spending all the time and money and effort to produce all of these videos, to get everything up and running. I've been working on getting apparel with the logo. And so I have many ideas, but now that I'm looking at my growth rate cut in half and my cost of reaching the average, viewer and subscriber doubling. I just don't see that this is feasible anymore. So I'd appreciate your encouragement. I have so many more things I want to do. As a matter of fact, I have over 10 videos in the queue that I've already shot and I'm in the process of editing, but I'm now looking at that and just re-evaluating everything. So thank you guys for watching. Those of you who have subscribed, I sincerely appreciate it. My hope is that I find a new way to make this channel feasible, viable once again, and I can continue this process. I hope that you see more videos from me and I can share updates on what I've done to be able to be successful. Thanks so much for watching. I hope there's a new video to come in the future. If not, if so, hey, remember, spread the love.